Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus Nan from IJS Electronics and today we're going to continue with another Alan Bradley Live and that is the latest drive, good call it, and that is a Powerflex 525 drive. This uh, specific set that we're going to be doing, it goes for 525 and 523 series drive, there's a difference with the uh, IOs in there, but and that's pretty much uh, quite uh, similar and actually there's quite a lot of difference when it comes down to complex settings so so we are going to be working on our five our powerflex uh, 525 uh, drive today and we as usual it's going to be a three-part video with a uh, commissioning and a local run first two three y and uh, speed control in a second and um, uh, mop and multi-speed control for our third video so uh all related videos and any manuals that i have used for these videos and any related information that i think is going to benefit in you in any possible way do check out the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we go, all wired in. So before we get started, I'll show you one a small a feature in here, which is uh, this guy in here. If you I, uh, pull this guy off it, you can take the uh, control part on it, off it, and as you can see down here in the back, you have a, uh, a USB port where you can uh, set up your drive uh, without even powering it up. You can before it gets powered up, and uh, you can do. Uh, not, I believe the software you use is a work, uh, workbench component. So uh, if we we most likely going to be looking into that in the future. So yeah, uh, you can pull it off, and you don't need uh, to power it up to be able to. A hey, um, to be able to uh, pre-program your drive so as you power up there's one thing first thing you need to make sure that this this red thing in here is supposed to have a jumper into it we are going to be using for our demonstration purposes we are going to be using a e-stop so uh it's basically as a safety circuit internal circuit circuit for the drive so if that is not closed off it will come up with error like that 0 uh, 59 so basically it should tell you yeah, whatever reason doesn't doesn't move along. So and then just to reset it to a, um, a click a stop button, uh, which is uh, normally in a normal conditions, it is pre-programmed to have a work as a reset anyway. But we're gonna get to that in a minute. So first things as always, we start with our connection points. Uh, we got the uh, phase and the neutral for L1 and L2 uh, going in right here. And then we have a, a three phases going out, a 230 volts going to the motor, which is VU and W. Regarding terminals, as I said already before, the red ones uh, are used for the safety circuit to make sure if you're using locally or remotely and you are not using those uh, point, uh, these three points, S plus one and two, uh, do make sure that they are having a, some form of jumper across it to make sure it doesn't show up with the faults. We are going to be using it because that's something I think everyone should do. And uh, then uh, these guys in here, these are uh, your uh, relays, sort of called relay outputs. They can be, uh, again, can be highly pre-configured, pre do different things uh, to indicate uh, uh, quite often used for different states of the drive and so so on so and then you have a generous seven uh, digital inputs right here in the bank in here there are six of them are highly uh, configurable Oop. Uh, in which you are going to be uh, uh, playing with and you can always uh, again uh, they can be pre-programmed and done whatever you want to do in uh, workbench components or something uh, software and in here you have uh, these two guys now will be used for com and uh, uh, getting your 24 volts out for a digital input and the rest of them will be used for analog uh, I, uh, analog ios which is in and out so uh, the next one where we go in here is these switches in here the first switch is in there which is named a j10 is sort of selection for analog output where you can select what you're going to be outputting volts or amps and this one in here, I've never seen in any other drives before, which I'm uh, quite keen to figure, uh, check it out. It's for the pulse. I presume that's for just pulsing the inputs. I'm not sure, we we'll, we'll check that out. And obviously down here, there must be one for a sync or a source uh, selection where we select where we're going to be, uh, how we're going to be operating our inputs, digital inputs. 
And then you have an internet port, uh, that one's gonna be obviously for your uh, drive configuration and, and all networking, blah, 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 between the drives. And then you have a uh, DSI port, uh, in other words, called Integral RS485 port, like all other drives would call it. And uh, that, again, is used for a networking, uh, basically, communications. And uh, that's when it comes down to, oh yeah, and these two guys in here, this is a, a sort of a grounding and um, shielding or something like that. I'm not really sure what that's used for. And regarding when it comes down to controls, it's quite straightforward. Escape is escape. Uh, select. It's basically when you select the jump in, in between the numbers in here. And if you want to enter the menu, you go into the uh, press enter and then escape. And when you want to enter it, you go up and down. And when you've done it, then, then press enter again and escape it. So, and um, uh, use by you using select. Uh, escape actually escape then you go in these uh, digital digits in here which are pretty much selecting what group of a parameters you would like to go in and uh, geez, there's a lot going on in here so yeah by using that you can select what group of parameters you want to get into so we're gonna definitely gonna be checking that out in a minute so and then is uh, we have a potentiometer which we're going to be controlling a uh, uh, speed control for a local run, and then you have uh, this guy in here that is for uh, selecting a, uh, a forward reverse uh, button, and then uh, start stop uh, is a self-explanatory for starting and stopping, and stop is also by default should be pre-programmed as your a uh, as your. Uh, reset button so having done that so next thing up is we need to set starts entering all oh no actually no we're going to be doing a, a factory reset and for the factory reset there is a wow there's a hell of a lot of extra additions than you used to previous drives a hell of a lot of is quite a few except so we need to go to parameter uh, group p and, and then we need to enter and then we're going to need to go to parameter 53. 53. Uh, enter it and then we need to go. There's a several options uh, need to, uh, you can select, which is parameter reset and the factory reset, power reset, module reset. We just want part of uh, factory reset, which is a 2. And then enter it and F048 will jump up and then just click stop to reset it and a uh, parameters have been, as it even tells you on the screen now, that a uh, have been reset to default. So next up, let's enter a motor data. And uh, before we even uh, get started, uh, one thing you always need to make sure that the 11 and 1 is always closed if you want the drive to operate. So you always, that's like an enable signal for the Alan Bradley drive, so do make sure that uh, is uh, there even for the local run and so is the safety for this drive you need to make sure that these guys are closed off unless you're using some form of e-stop so uh, do make sure those things are there so first up a p30 this is for the language you're not going to be using that one uh, the next one up is going to be our uh, voltage to make sure that we do check out what voltage it is uh, it is in your motor plate so uh, that is for that and the next one up is going to be your Hertz uh, by default. Bradley is coming to 60 Hertz if you are in UK or whatever country you are in. Uh, uh, here, here in UK we are 50, so I'm setting my as uh, 50. The next one up it is your uh, motor current. So basically where you uh, where you want the motor to trip out. And I have it set up as a 1 amp. So my, my one is sort of up 1.03 amp. So uh, that's for that and the next one up it is as well this is where you select uh, the, the actual uh, current of the motor the, the first one you can select lower if you want where you, you, your overload to happen quicker but this one in here more or less try to give an accurate uh, uh, amp reading from the motor so it's more or less used for auto tuning uh, next one up is your poles make sure that uh, you are, your motor poles uh, are correct for a uh, 1000 uh, uh, 100 uh, 1,300, 1,400 RPM. That means that is a four pole motor. Uh, the next one up is going to be your RPM. Do make sure you check, make sure that is correct at the, exactly what your motor plate is. It'll be better for the auto two. 
So, uh, by default, it's 1,700 for the Bradleys, which is a very unusual number, but it is what it is. So make sure you say like uh, change that one to whatever the, your uh, uh, RPM is. And the next one up is going to be your uh, 0.4, which, which one was that? 37 one. Uh, oh, that's the power. So uh, my power is going to be a, uh, oh, my power is a 0.18 kilowatts. So we're going to do that in here. Thank you. And uh, next one up, it's going to be our voltage class. I'll leave that one as is. It sits on 600 as default. Uh, where are we? So uh, the, uh, that's one not even done. Yeah, the, the voltage class not even coming up on this one. That's good. And the next one is where you select a, uh, a motor control. It, uh, by default, it stands at SVC. If you want to read up what each one, those, each one of those things are, definitely check them out online. I'm not going to go through them, but SVC pretty much stands that the high torque uh, management for a low speed. So you definitely want to leave uh, uh, that. So uh, then the following is a auto tune and there's a couple of uh, options for the auto tune we can do. And uh, that is going to be a static and rotate. Static is if you have a load connected to the motor. Uh, try not to do the, stat, uh, the static one. Uh, uh, do the static one, but if you have a, uh, if you can uh, free up your motor away from the load, then use the rotator tune. So we're going to be using the rotate tune because our motor is uh, free. But if your motor is not free of loads, to make sure you use the static one. So let's enter that one, and we change that to two. Enter it, and then we just click start. And this is where it will start doing is business. So you might take a, about, I think it's about 20 or 30 seconds, something like that. It's not really rotating anything. As soon as it's going to be done, it will return back to zero. Tune is good because it makes, it makes the drive to understand. There we go. Makes the drive to understand the motor so much better. Uh, for especially when it comes down to the low speed torque controls and things like that, he understands what's really going on. He reads now all the information he can get from the especially resistance and things like that from the motor and uh, pretty much enters them into the drive. Here we go. And that's the auto tune has been done. And having said that, the drive is pretty much ready to go. And before we get started, we'll have a, have a look at a couple of notable uh, parameters. So the 41 is going to be for acceleration time. 42 is going to be for your deacceleration time. Uh, 43 is going to be for your minimum speed. If you don't want speed to go any lower than uh, selected value in this parameter, make sure that is select. And, oh, uh, no, don't want to do that. And uh, 44, you make sure that is, is set at your motor data plate, or obviously higher, but obviously it comes to consequences if you do go higher. But in our case, my motor is 50, so I'm sticking to 50 hertz. That's the maximum the frequency will be able to go. And uh, the last uh, two is, is, is no, the 46 is going to be for your uh, uh, where the potentiometer is going to be working for. By default, it's going to be on one. So that is correct. So that will be the potentiometer from the keypad. And 47 is where the control is going to happen, and controls will be happening from your uh, start stop button in, on front of the keypad. Here it says net POT. So, those are notable parameters that you need to check up on before you get yourself going. So, we have enable signal in here, we have a e stop in there. So, only thing is left, let's try out. So, so, so that's run. Drop the speeds around. Uh, fold it out with an e stop. Stop it. And that's how, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, set up and ready to go. So, in the next video, we're going to be jumping on onto remote controls, which is going to get a bit more fun on that one. So, that's how the commissioning and a, uh, pretty much got our uh, drive set up and ready to go for our motor. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like the videos, please smash that like if you didn't. Watch this like, comment below what you like, what you don't like, any questions and anything you wish to ask. 
definitely do so in comment section below and I'll answer them as soon as I can and obviously as accurate as I can. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.